When we think about where life might exist in our solar system, Mars typically gets called to mind first. Neptune, who cares, too far. Saturn, too much gas. The moons of the other planets, for the most part, barely get a blip. And yet there is a moon orbiting Saturn that is simply brimming with seas and lakes. Where there is water, there is often life. Titan is only place in our solar system that we have found stable surface liquids and is the only place in the solar system that has a thick atmosphere as Earth's. Its composition is also pretty much close, with about 98% nitrogen, 2% methane and hydrogen. As compared to Earth's atmosphere, 78% nitrogen, 21% oxygen and 1% carbon dioxide. That makes NASA think it's a great place to look for extraterrestrial life. Krakenmeer is thought to be the largest sea on Titan with an area of 400,000 square kilometers, larger than Earth's Caspian Sea. Above all else, Titan is amazingly rich in complex organic compounds, making it a top prospect in the search for alien life. The liquid on Titan's surface is not a salt water as in our oceans and seas, but it's a hydrocarbons like liquid methane and ethane. Well, methane is basically a natural gas that we cook our meals, but in the liquid form. As the liquid water is the basis of life here on Earth, but on Titan, liquid methane could be. So if there are creatures on those seas, it would appear extremely different. They would have evolved purely from liquid methane. While this might sound promising, some elements of Titan's makeup aren't exactly conducive for us to get there and find life. That is, at least without the right equipment. NASA is considering sending a submarine the 1.4 billion kilometers to Titan in the next 20 years to plunge into its noxious seas. But there are some challenges that need to be solved first. A huge difficulty with these missions is to package the submarine into a system that can be launched on a rocket, survive in deep space during the roughly 7 year cruise to Titan, and then make it through the hypersonic descent into the alien ocean. It turns out, space planes such as X-37 are ideal and would work well when descending into Titan's thick hydrocarbon atmosphere. The space plane would launch from Earth on the top of a rocket with a submarine inside. Once at the Saturnian system, the space plane would then land on Kraken Mir and deploy the submarine. The problem is, it's cold. Very, very cold. That liquid methane, it flows at somewhere around minus 180 degrees Celsius. On Earth, this temperature would instantly cause humans to turn as hard as rocks. For the perspective, the coldest ever recorded temperature on Earth is minus 89.2 degrees Celsius in Antarctica. Well, once it gets there, another issue is electrical problem. This obviously cannot be provided by solar panels as it is on many spacecrafts. Compact nuclear reactors and fuel cells are very efficient, but too heavy. Instead, electricity can be generated from the radioactive decay of plutonium, a technique similar to that of powering Cassini spacecraft. But perhaps the hardest thing will be to control the temperature inside the submarine, in the sea temperature of frigid minus 180 degrees. The radioactive decay of plutonium produces a lot of heat that needs to be dissipated. Well, another problem that follows, that the heat would create bubbles of dissolved nitrogen gas in the liquid surrounding the submarine, which could make observations via onboard cameras difficult. It could mess up sub's trajectories as well. The bubbles of nitrogen could also prevent the sub's buoyancy and the propulsion systems from working properly, so scientists will have to develop a blast system that reacts fast enough for the submarine to remain stable. Another problem is picks or it didn't happen. This may have happened to you before. You are using your fully charged cell phone in winter, suddenly your phone's battery is shot. Mobile phones stops working in minus 10, 15 degrees Celsius. Now imagine trying to get a camera to work at minus 180 degrees. NASA would have to develop a high-tech boroscope, a rigid tube with an eyepiece at the one end and a camera that could withstand these extreme temperatures. Communication should not be the biggest problem. The submarine on Earth have to come to the surface to communicate because radio waves don't penetrate very far through water. But that may not be an issue on Titan. The really neat thing is that the hydrocarbons should be transparent to radio waves. If it doesn't work out on Titan though, submarine would have to go to the surface for periods of time to send a signal back to Earth, so the antenna would have to be above the surface. But there are a sliver of good news. Some of the shallow shorelines of Kraken Mir is only 30 to 40 meters deep, but it's thought to be 200 meters at its deepest. As you dive down beneath the surface, the pressure increases because of the weight of the liquid above. On Earth, you can feel this in your ears when swimming underwater. Liquid methane is about half as dense as water and gravity on Titan is about 7 times weaker than Earth's. So submarines diving down 200 meters on Titan don't need to withstand the same pressure as they would on Earth. 
NASA has many challenges ahead of it. Scheduling a trip to Titan without getting lost, burning up in Titan's atmosphere as the spacecraft descends without completely destroying the submarine, would each be a massive feat alone. Moreover, NASA's budget problems as usual. And interestingly, there is a fastest possible way to go to Titan. Even if it takes 7 years to get there technically, we can do that in 6 months. Well, as you know, Titan has 100 times more natural energy resources than Earth. Sounds like Titan needs some freedom and democracy.